What's going on guys? I'm here with the Galaxy S25 Ultra and I'm gonna show you how to set it up plus some of the settings I recommend changing out of the box to make the most out of the user experience. Let's get into it. I'm gonna start from the beginning so if your phone's already up and running, you might want to skip ahead. But this is what it looks like when you take your new phone out of the box. When you turn the device on, you'll be greeted by Setup Wizard and go through the steps such as agreeing to the terms, connecting to Wi-Fi, creating a passcode, and setting up other biometrics. You want to log into your Google and Samsung account for your information and apps transfer over from your old device. But after that, you're pretty much ready to go. And yes, because I know you're wondering, this is the titanium silver blue Galaxy S25 Ultra, the signature color for this phone. I'm curious to know which color you got, so let me know in the comments. Also want to say thanks to everyone who has checked out my other Galaxy S25 Ultra videos so far, but if this is your first time channel, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. Now, back to the settings to change on your Galaxy S25 Ultra. With the 6.9 inch display, there are a few tweaks you might want to make. First, you can choose between light and dark mode. That's up to your preference. Here's an important tip. If you turn adaptive brightness off, you can unlock extra brightness. Useful if you're outdoors, though keep in mind that battery life will take a hit. Looking at the motion smoothness, I recommend using adaptive to take advantage of the 120 hertz refresh rate. Similarly, this is unique to the S25 Ultra. You're going to go to screen resolution and thanks to the phone's ProScaler technology, when you enable QHD+, content on the phone will now be upscaled to 3120 by 1440p. There are a lot of other display settings to explore, but if there's one last thing I definitely recommend enabling, it's accidental touch protection. It's pretty self-explanatory, but useful nonetheless. Since this is your phone, you're probably going to want to personalize it to you. With One UI 7 and Android, you can really fine tune how you want your Galaxy S25 Ultra to look. Long press on your lock screen and you'll see all the options to customize it. You can assign all sorts of actions or app shortcuts here, change the clock style, add widgets, and make it larger. On your home screen, you can move apps around, add more widgets, change the color theme, just have fun with it. New to the Galaxy S25 Ultra are two new information providing features known as Now Brief and Now Bar. Now Brief is a morning and nightly summary of your activity, calendar, news, and anything else that might be relevant to you. Go into Galaxy AI settings to curate which content you want your Now Brief to include. Maybe you want to add traffic, but turn off moments, totally up to you. For the Now Bar, you're going to the lock screen and the AOD settings and then decide which apps you're happy to see live notifications from at a glance on the bottom of your phone's display. It only works with a couple of apps for the time being, but I wouldn't be surprised if Samsung expands functionality in the near future. With Galaxy AI, you could set up features like call assist, notices, and transcription assist. These can answer a call on your behalf, translate or summarize notes, or transcribe voicemails, and much more. Audio Racer is a new Galaxy AI feature that will analyze sound in a video and give you options to lessen noises or increase speech. There's also smarter shadow detection in generative edit, so you can now get better results when editing photos. The camera settings I pay attention to the most are the resolution size, which can be toggled between 250 or 12 megapixels. I always turn on composition guides so I can line up my photos perfectly, keeping my photos level to the horizon and obeying the rule of thirds. Finally, motion photo is like live photo on the iPhone. It takes several shots in quick succession when you snap a picture so you can choose the best afterward. Switch that on in the camera app here. And now with the Galaxy S25 Ultra, you can record video in log format if you want greater control over brightness and color in the edit. Go to pro video mode, select log. You can also set this up as default video mode. Once you have a video recorded, the Galaxy S25 Ultra can also color the log footage for you automatically. All you need to do is press this button here in the gallery and you can save to the current video or save as a copy. If you made it through this whole video, I hope you've learned a thing or two about how to make the most out of your Galaxy S25 Ultra. Let me know in the comments which new feature you're either looking forward to using or already enjoying the most. I'm John V and I'll see you in my next video.